Hello everybody and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Today's story is special because here in the United States it's Memorial Day today. And Memorial Day is a chance for us to remember, to look at our memory of the past. In particular, we like to remember past lives. And so for today's special story, I thought we would use a story that allowed us to remember past lives. Today, we'll remember the lives from 500 million years ago. Not people, not even dinosaurs. This is older than the dinosaurs. And it takes us to this rock right here. You might have noticed this rock in front. It's kind of a sort of a tannish color rock, but there's a black dot in the top and that black dot is what I need to show you. Let me come a little bit closer. That black dot is a fossil. There it is right there. You can see it's got a round head on the top. It's got a body with these kind of look like ribs almost, but that's like an outer shell. It's got sort of a central body right down the middle there. And this rock is 500 million years old, older than the dinosaurs. In fact, this fossil, this type of life that we can remember today with this story, was the dominant life form in the oceans. All life was in the oceans 500 million years ago. Nothing lived on the land only in the oceans. And these little guys, they'd skitter along the bottom of the muddy bottom of the oceans. These fossils are called trilobites. That is a fossil trilobite. And it's a beauty too. Now these trilobites were so common in the oceans and the seas of 500 million years ago that they came in all different shapes and sizes. Some were round, some were pointy, some were fatter, some were thinner, but some of them got really, really big. Stand that guy right there so you can see it. And the biggest ones got like this big, huge trilobites. And they were so huge and so surprising that some of the first geologists that found them were like, whoa, that is so huge. Doesn't make any sense. And they named it Paradoxides, because a paradox is a puzzle that you can't solve. It doesn't make any sense. So the giant Paradoxides fossils were very rare. And one particular place that they were found was an ancient continent, a lost continent called Avalonia. Avalonia. Kind of sounds like the name of one of a Prince's original backup singers. No, that was Apollonia. Ask your parents about that. No, this continent was called Avalonia. This lost continent. A lost continent where giant Paradoxides lived. And it's interesting because you can find those giant Paradoxides fossils in Morocco. That's in Africa, the northwestern coast of Africa. You can find those giant Paradoxides fossils in England and Ireland. And in the Netherlands, and you can find them in one other particular place. And I'm going to show you a paradox of these right now. It's this rock right back here, and it's so big I need two hands. Wow. This is a paradox of these fossil, and I'll bring it up close so you can see it. It's cracked. We can only see the top. But there it is. There it is. There's the round head up there and there's that central body and those like lines like ribs of the outside of that shell now it's cracked we don't have the bottom but that paradoxides fossil is huge and guess where this was collected this wasn't collected in morocco it wasn't collected in england this paradoxides fossil i'll put it right there it's big was collected right here in boston just a little bit south of the city of Boston in Massachusetts. It turns out that Boston and little parts of Morocco and little bits of 
England, Ireland, Holland, and some portions of the Canadian coast are all fragments of that lost continent called Avalonia. Avalonia has been broken up into all those different parts, and that tells an incredible story. All these bits of Avalonia, that lost continent from Africa, were mushed together starting 450 million years ago to build the great supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea means all land. That's because all the land, all the continents were in this giant supercontinent called Pangaea. And Avalonia, this lost continent, got caught up, mushed all up. And all these paradoxities, fossils, that were on the shallow seas, on the edges of Avalonia, they got caught up when all those land came, lands came together. So if you went back, oh, 300 million, 250 million years ago, right here, we would be smack in the middle of that super continent called Pangaea. Well, then what happened, starting at about 200 million years ago, right when the dinosaurs were really getting going, new rifts formed, the new oceans, and those continents were pulled apart and pushed apart as new oceans pushed up. And we formed the continents that we have today. But that left little bits of this lost continent from Africa here in Boston, a little bit along the Canadian coast, a little bit in England, in Holland, and of course the parts on the edge of Africa too. That means that where I am right now in Boston, Massachusetts, in the East Coast of the United States, is actually a little bit of the lost continent of Avalonia from Africa. We are actually standing on a fragment of Africa right here. And this paradoxities try to bite is part of the proof of that incredible story. A lot of people are surprised when I tell them that if you live in Boston, you're actually living in a lost sliver from Africa, the lost continent of Avalonia. If you ever find one of these giant Paradoxities fossils, call me or a museum. But I also want you to know that if you find it, you have found the lost continent of Avalonia and you're probably standing on a sliver of that lost continent from right off the coast of Africa that was lost and crunched up hundreds of millions of years ago. I think that's a good story to remind us of the great past that's come before us and the lives of these trilobites that dominated the seas 500 million years ago. I hope you like the story and I'll see you next time for my next Every Rock Has a Story. Bye-bye.